What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Thursday, September 14th, 2023. As always, I'm your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas. Stu is out on assignment today, so I am rocking a solo show. Going to be a little bit smaller, really only have one story to cover, um, and then I'll dive in um, to some of the finance-related stuff and an M&A deal that actually just dropped about 20 minutes ago before I, or about an hour and 20 minutes ago before I recorded this. So um, I'll bring you some light thoughts on that. We also have the EIA um, um, coming out with a pretty large crude storage build, but I want to start um, with the story oil market report for September, 2023. That's out by the IEA, the quote of the article quote, beginning of the end of the fossil fuel arrow um, era is approaching says the IEA done, done, done. But as always, guys, before we dive into that, check us out. The world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, dashboard energynewsbeat.com. You can email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com. Subscribe to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Hit us up at YouTube, um, at Energy Newsbeat. If I was a 16-year-old YouTuber, I'd say smash that like button. But I'll refrain from doing that. And just we appreciate everybody. Um, who sits there and subscribes to the show. That's that's the best way to help us out. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. We'll keep it quick today, guys. EIA this morning drops crude oil um, market report for September 2023. As I mentioned, the highlight beginning of the end of the fossil fuel era is approaching, according to the IEA. They go ahead and actually put out a... Uh, um, an op-ed in the Financial Times, Fahit Briol, he's the IEA head. Um, the quote is, the world is on the cusp of historic turning point. Peaks for the three fossil fuels are a welcome sight. Interesting. The IEA, it's a welcome sight. The fossil fuels are going down. Interesting. They're not getting any money from Saudi, I'll tell you that much. Showing that the shift to a cleaner, more secure energy systems is speeding up and that an effort avoids the worst effects of climate change that are incoming. Let's go ahead and read the top line numbers. The world oil demand, according to the IEA, remains on track to grow by 2.2 million barrels per day in 2023 to a uh, to just below the record um, of 102 million at 101.8 million barrels per day um, in 2023, mainly led by a resurgence in Chinese consumption, um, jet, uh, jet fuel and petrochemical feedstocks. Um, China will dominate the overall increase to 101.8 or 102.8 million barrels per day. Um, and that's based on a below trend GDP growth. Um, the extension of those output cuts by Russia and Saudi Arabia through the end of the year are going to have a are going to lock in a substantial market deficit. What they don't tell you is that means prices are up. They just tell you there's a market deficit. They don't necessarily tell you prices are going to go up. We do know that Russian, uh, they also mentioned Russian oil export revenue surged by one point. 8 billion to 17.1 billion in August as higher prices um, have more than offset their lower shipments. Um, even though they did ease exports by 150,000 uh, barrels per day to uh, 7.2 million barrels, um, which is again, below their average shipments, both to China and India slumped as well. Refining margins did hit eight month high as they did struggle again, as refiners struggle to keep up with a lot of this demand. It's just really interesting though. Um, you know, this, you know, I think Fahit Brihol, this IEA had, I, I'd recommend reading this article on Energy News. But he mainly talks about the sooner than expected peak for fossil fuels was primary driven by the specular growth, the spectacular growth of clean energy, including solar panels and electric vehicles. I mean, what, what data is he looking at? This is just what I don't understand about the IEA. What data are they looking at? I, I don't know, because if you look around, it's like, Oh, where's Waldo on these solar panels? Where's Waldo on this EV adoption that we're all talking about? We just talked about a few days ago. Secretary Gramhold can't even figure out how to take an EV from four state four states away, and they have to you know park in spots to make sure that there's enough charging ports to so that she can get there on time. I, mean, I don't know what data this guy's looking at, but it's absolutely insane. Um, you know, he did mention that this that to, in order to um, these projected declines are unfortunately nowhere near steep enough to put the world on path to limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Um, this would require significant stronger and faster policy action by governments. Um, so our, our friends at the IEA think we're all dead because oil and gas demand is going up, but 
by 2030, you're going to be off it. Um, and that's an oversimplification. We're not going to be off it by 2030. They're saying it's going to peak and then slowly start declining. Um, I just say I doubt that. Um, when we look at the oil markets today, we actually saw a little bit of a slump today. It was it was a little bit of a uh, of of a surprise, if only because the EIA, which is the Energy Information Administration here in the United States, they came out and actually showed a four million barrel rise in the crude oil uh, petroleum reserves. The, the the API yesterday only only said about it was like one or one point two. So this this about three million change to the upside you know, is going to slightly hurt prices a little bit. Again, we've only edged down to eighty eight seventy four, even though we're still at a ten month high. Um, as refining hits um, its 2020 highs, we did see that also in those numbers. Um, so all around, you know, okay for oil. We're a little choppy. Um, I thought the only really interesting I saw from an oil side today, guys, Vital Energy. They come out and do three different agreements at the, or three different m and deals at the same time. Henry Energy, Tall City Property, and Maple Energy Holdings. Uh, Tall City and Henry, those are both Midland operators, private uh, family owned. Maple Energy is actually Riverstone. So a little liquidity event for the guys down there at Riverstone. They can uh, um, enjoy their... Uh, enjoy Bob's Steakhouse tonight. I'm sure they're eating well tonight. Um, they're set to close fourth quarter of 2023. To give you guys an idea, this is about 53,000 net acres in total. Um, 44% of their uh, reserves are oil, so it's a little bit more of a gas-weighted asset. Um, to give you guys an idea, um, full 2024 oil production is expected to be somewhere about um, 55,000 barrels of oil per day, um, which is pretty crazy. Um, add somewhere between 100 to 150 gross high-value locations um, with an average break-even price of $50. So cut that number by 90%. That's the actual number. Um, you know, acquisition sits at a at a nice 2.9 times next 12 months EBA docs. Um, so you can read the read the fine print on what that means. But um, 2.9 again, well, we haven't quite seen the three. Who's gonna pay three? We've seen two. We've seen about two and a half. We saw 2.9 with the Giddings uh Giddings deal earlier. We see Vital come in at 2.9. Who's going to be the one that breaks over the three times next 12 months cash flow? You know, the, obviously, IR guy of the week, vital energy to significantly increase Permian Basin scale through accretive transactions. Again, our favorite word on the show, guys. Um, but that's really all I've got. It was a little quiet of a day. We'll, we'll give you a break from, from the climate hypocrisy, and we'll focus a little bit on some cool stuff going on oil and gas, guys. Appreciate everybody interacting with the show. As always, email us, questions, energynewsbeat.com. Follow us, subscribe to our YouTube at Energy Newsbeat. But for Michael Tanner, guys, I'll let you get out of here. This is our last show. You'll see uh, uh, we have a pot, Stu's podcast coming out tomorrow. You'll hear the weekly recap on Sunday or on Saturday, and then we'll see you Monday, folks. Have a great weekend. Oh, <laughs>